Hello and welcome to True Crime Diary, in which we take a light-hearted look at a serious subject. Every two weeks we look back through the stories of true crime to find an event that took place on this week in history. I'm your host Mark Decano and with me as always are my friends Jed Lester Hello and Rue Turner Hello Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts if you can and if you can't you can always email us to stuff at truecrimediary.co.uk and in appreciation of every five star review we'll give you a shout out on a future episode. The date we're looking at this week is April the 10th, and in 1959, three men forced their way into the home of former actress and wealthy divorcee Vera Krupp, stealing over $700,000 in cash and jewels, as well as the famous Krupp Diamond, a stone of over 33 carats, worth more than a quarter million dollars on its own. I didn't want to uh, ruin your pace there, but don't don't we say actor nowadays? (sighs) Yes, it's in 1959. I'm using terminology of the time. What came first? <laughs> what came first? Vera Krupp or the Krupp Diamond? Definitely definitely the Krupp the, Diamond, yeah. I think, because it takes takes over a billion well, years to make one. <laughs> I mean, that's an obvious statement, yeah. but the name. It was named the Krupp Diamond after Mr. Krupp, yeah. uh, who then gave it to his then wife, Vera Hossenfeld, who then mm-hmm. divorced him. His second wife. Second wife. And she kept it in the in the split. Yeah. Is that true? Yes, yeah. No. They divorced and she kept the ring, among other things. Oh, it's a ring, is it? it well, it's a diamond. It was set in a ring. Ooh, shiny. Mm. Uh, along with two uh, what they call baguette diamonds, which is long, thin ones that look like a French loaf of bread. They were mounted, mounted on either side. Yeah. Long doughy diamonds. Yeah, look, a well, tiny, I mean tiny, tiny loaf. <laughs> tiny, tiny Loaf. Rock hard l- loaf. <laughs> okay, so it's probably quite big, is it? Um, hence, someone's going to want to nick it. Well, it's about the size of a, a marble. Yeah, it's wider than your finger. Yeah, I mean, that, for a diamond, is that's it? pretty big. Unless that's you're a member of royalty. How many... I don't really know what the the scale is, but the carrot... Uh, how many carrots? Thirty, almost, Over 33 carrots. That sounds quite a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. For a, for a ring, it's a big salad. It's a big old chunk. I mean, if you're mm. totally it's that more thing than around. two months' salary. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. It was a quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, they presumably went to find the diamond, and they found a load of money as well that, for some reason, wasn't in the bank. But yeah, so she lost that as well. Yes. Yeah. So where we are in the world is southwest of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. It's a 500-acre ranch called the Spring Mountain Ranch. I would say that's pre-Las Vegas. Isn't, wasn't that sick? I know, perhaps it wasn't. Well, it was very, very early on. It was early, early yeah, very, very early. When was that founded? It was the fifth. 1905. As a town? Oh, we, we're talking yeah, as a we're talking, casino land. We're talking casino. As a settlement. No, no, forget oh, the right. settlement. I'm talking about for, for the, sod, the strip. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about, yeah, we're talking about Bugsy Siegel. Yeah, we are, yeah, yeah. When did they when did they first build the pyramids? Yeah, before that. <laughs> I thought it was like I mean see Bugsy Siegel sounds like a fifties, forties, fifties Hey, Bugsy. Uh Yeah, this is we're talking post war, aren't we? Do you think? Really? Yeah, yeah, I think so. We're getting no diamonds, see? Oh yeah, it's forties. He was uh, Bugsy go. Siegel was assassinated in forty seven. So So it existed, but that's it when the, the Flamingo would be running anyway. Bugsy Siegel is dead. The Flamingo belongs to us. Small strip, so to speak. They've had 10 years to build as a casino complex, so there would have been a fair bit. It had its own airport by that point. Okay, yeah. So she lives there for some reason. She lives there, her and her staff. Oh, right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> she bought it when um, her marriage was already was starting to fail, so she bought this ranch so she could um, spend time there instead of... With her right. husband. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have cost hardly anything as well. And then would have been, over the years, would have become very... I'm talking about the land. Would mm. have been ridiculously mm. expensive, but anyway. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, she had to cattle, I think, didn't she? Yes. Quite quite to, a few She cattle. had to cattle. Is that a, is that a <laughs> phrase? <laughs> to, to cattle. It's the verb, in Yorkshire. It's yeah. the verb to cattle. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> I... <laughs> Yeah, you took to took to cattle. I have to farm. I've got to cattle. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, I've obvi- got t- it's obvious. I've got Tuck Cattle in, in back in field. It's obvious <laughs> what it is, but it, I didn't know. I, and I, in, I understood exactly what you meant instantly, but the I've never heard of <laughs> she. Someone has to cattle. Yeah, well, I wouldn't take, read too much into the London dwelling yeah, sure. Welsh North Yorkshireman yeah, yeah. in the group. <laughs> uh, so on this ranch, uh, one day these uh, men knock at the door, uh, offering to resurface the the driveway. Oh, they came around mine last week. There, yeah, you go. They get around. It's like it was paved by angels. But uh, obviously, in the midst of making this well well seeming offer, they burst in, um, and they uh, they tie her. Mrs. Krupp and her foreman, and then redid the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, presumably <laughs> said we're going to tie you Stay up. Stay so there, <laughs> so you don't tread any soft so you tarmac. Don't write your name sneakily <laughs> yeah, in the corner. They had some, they had some extra tarmac left over from a job up the road. Yeah, yeah. So they could do it for do it hers for cheap. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, okay. So it was a cunning ruse, and they burst in. They burst in. They tie her to a chair and her foreman of, of her staff, who she'd been having dinner with. Yes. They tie him to a chair. They take the cord from a, a, a lamp and they tie them back to back and blindfold them. So they're secured in, in restraint. Classic um, hostage set up in a film, mm. I'd say. Going by the stories we tell, at this point, you can't tell whether she'll live or not. Well, yeah. no idea. I don't know what the end of it is. So the robbers, uh, they uh, apparently knew what, what they were doing and where, the, where to look. So they stole, as I say, $700,000 in cash and jewels. Mm. They stole a revolver, a camera. We just robbed you. And the diamond ring was on Vera Krupp's finger and they pulled it off with enough force to draw blood. They just took it off her finger. Oh dear. So do you think the... An early blood diamond. Yeah. Do you think the reason why they knew is because her, their divorce, her divorce had made headlines. Oh yeah, definitely. Right. Okay. I mean she wore the she wore the ring everywhere she went. So she's okay. wandering around town with this massive rock on right, her. Right, right. People are going to notice. So she was hey, she's got a couple of books. society was she at the time? Yeah, arguably. She didn't do lot big events and stuff. I think she you're was well known. I think you're forgetting all her cat- cattling. <laughs> all the cattling. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm speculating wildly yes. here, but it's it's not going to have anything to do with her husband. Oh yeah, no, is it? Is it not? It's no, no, no. A strange husband living. Who bought it? Who yeah, bought yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, who didn't get his money by being kind to people? No. Uh, well, Mr. Krupp uh, had a, let's call it a, a checkered past. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, for it to be checkered, there'd need to be some white squares. <laughs> okay, so it's a completely black past then. Very dark. <laughs> they got married in 1952, just after his release from three years in Landsberg Prison for war crimes. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, right. So, <laughs> Put it that oh, way. Oh, sorry. I was thinking yeah. he, was, he was being a bit it, hard done by uh, up until now. No. But, oh, right. No. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think, I think when your indictment reads... For crimes against humanity, humanity. Yes. <laughs> you can be easily described oh, as a okay. bad egg, and that's that's yeah. what it read, was it? Yeah, yeah. So this this is where the 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 Krupp name and the Krupp wealth comes from. I mean, not just from war crimes, but I mean, the Krupp family was four hundred years in steel and arms manufacturing up until that time God. through many wars right. in Europe. Um, I mean, there was one of the biggest, if not the biggest, steel concern worldwide for nearly 100 years. I'm always concerned about steel. And quite right, too. Especially <laughs> when they're using it to make massive railway guns, tanks, submarines. A railway gun? Yeah, yeah, What's yeah. What's that? You know those photos you see from, like, World War I, uh, uh, or indeed World War II, when they have on a railway carriage with a massive great gun that can fire across the channel? Uh, they made them. Really? Mm. I didn't... Yeah, yeah. I'm the not railway, sure I've even seen The that. railway it sits on is to catch yeah. the recoil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's on, a, on the railway for on a... On railway, for a, yeah. But it's on yeah. there for a reason. So it yeah. can... I mean, it's too heavy to, to drive. <laughs> oh, right. It's too heavy to drive anywhere. So uh, they... You put it along on the train and then you remove the train so the train doesn't so get did smashed they, like, the gun So did they, like, invent that or something? As well yes. as make it? Yeah. God, who invents that? As well as inventing the Panzer Oh, tank. did they? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And the U-boat. Oh, and the U-boat. Blimey. Yeah. They manufactured over 100 <laughs> U-boats in World War oh, wow. II. Wow. They, um, they, inv- they created the, the famed 88, which is the, uh, the anti-tank gun. Mm. Is that the K-88? Yeah, the K for Krupp. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was started out as an anti-aircraft gun, but uh, they got this clever mm-hmm. idea of pointing it horizontally, and it became the most effective anti-tank gun of the of World War Two. Was it anti? That, that was cr- anti Panzer. Or it's, it's the same. No, well, they, it would have been it's if the they'd been size, on opposing yeah, sides. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. It was anti Sherman and yes. anti. Uh, what was that? Churchill. Anti Churchill tank. So they, whatever, invested and made a fortune yeah. in, in weaponry, basically, for, over the war. Yeah. So was it a yeah. good. Was yeah. the war. The war for them was like, well, hey, let's. Yeah, because they're selling to both right, sides. Okay. Yeah, they're yeah. selling to all sides. Yeah, they were selling to mm-hmm. Russia and Turkey when they were at war with each other. They wow. sell. They sell to everybody who wants guns. That, during the Balkan War, they sold to everyone. <laughs> they even sold a few guns to the Serbians just for good. We're measure. talking th- the thirty years ago. Balkan. No, so it's, no, the no, the pre pre that. Uh, oh, sorry, right, World yeah. War One, the, Bal- the fir- fir- fine, early fine. Balkan conflict. Oh. In fact, during the Franco-Prussian War, eighteen seventy, they yes. That was an experiment between basically Krupp steel versus French bronze in terms of Germany fighting France. So the French didn't have steel guns, they had brass guns or bronze guns. So is that is that conclusively the end of the Bronze Age? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we finally it proved happened. it wasn't as yeah. good as anything else. Also, they learned to load the gun from the other end instead of from the firing end. Germany had Krupp steel manufactured breech loading guns versus France's bronze muzzle loaders. And Gosh. guess who won that? Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So there you go. So, I mean, yeah, 400 years. So back to the 30 years war. So many, many, wow, many wow, years. Wow. All about guns, steel, and they dominated worldwide. So all the money until mm. the last, I mean, big deal was obviously the use of uh, over 100,000 in slave labor for Krupp during. Uh, World War Two, so yeah. that's where he got the money from. He only did three years, so he got off light in my book. Really? Well, he was sentenced to twelve. Wasn't he? Yeah, sentenced to twelve. But... Emperor of German Iron and Steel was Alfred Krupp. Twelve years imprisonment and confiscation of property was the sentence. The order was revoked, and Alfred Krupp served a reduced sentence and compelled to sell his securities. This will bring him thirty million pounds. Herr Krupp has the last luck. But he got pardoned three years later. What was the uh, what was the charge? <laughs> Crimes against humanity. Crimes against humanity, yeah. Profiteer. Right, oh, oh I, I thought it'd be a bit. I mean, that's quite yeah. wide, but. Well, this is the this was the the Nuremberg right, trial. Okay. Yeah. Three years is that all? I mean. Yeah. yeah. For enslaving over a hundred thousand people. <laughs> yeah, three years. <laughs> yeah, should cover it. And profiteering from war with the Nazis. Yeah, him and Schindler. Schindler and I are like peas in a pod. We both made shells for the Nazis, but mine worked. Damn it. Both of whom made lifts, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both Krupp, Tiersen and yeah, and Schindler. All the best they people are into ex- uh, excellent lift. They're into yeah, elevator manufacture and um, profiteering from slave labour. <laughs> he served his three years in Landsberg, which is the prison that um, Hitler was in, to stay out of interest. I'm guessing that's not your sort of six by six tiny cell. With no I think he bus. would have been. I mean, it was a medieval prison, but I think he would have been pretty comfortable. Hmm. My daughter doesn't like a girl at school because she. Uh, pronounces Nazi Nazis she, the, the, in, in World War Two, the Nazis and she goes oh god Can't well in that. fairness that's, that's that's the way Churchill pronounced it was so. it oh okay yeah Winston Churchill called them Nazis so uh, so she's in good company actually she should say well technically that's correct well so. I was going to say what is what is <laughs> technically correct but if um, I mean we all say it the other way don't we yeah well it would be from the German wouldn't it Nazi or not Nazi and also So it would be Nazi. Yeah. So she's right to despise her. I think they should all both <laughs> equally mock one another Fine. on that basis. <laughs> Crimes against pronunciation. So, ba- so meanwhile, Vera's still tied up. <laughs> <laughs> she's tied up. Did she get a hair clip out of a? Uh, and then pass it to him and then he undoes the lock and then they <laughs> flee they uh, they rocked the chairs towards yes, the fireplace of yes. <laughs> uh, oh no wait that's Indiana Jones uh, they <laughs> they rubbed the rope on a sharpened bit of the chair to chop it rubbing the rope yeah. against the sharp side of the chair leg <laughs> yeah let's, just, let's say yes okay 
uh, we don't really know how they how they escaped from their tying upage, but let's presume any or all of the of the above. Right. So by one of the aforementioned methods, they gained their freedom. Did they? This is like ages after everything had been nicked, I presume. Oh yeah, this, right, that's okay. all gone. So it's not you know, a... the money. The money's gone. The robbers have escaped. Right, okay. the, the driveway's been tarmacked. Yes, everything. Yeah. It's all and the way they've gone. Fine. They fleed. Okay. They fled the scene. Okay. Yep. Then what happened? So they make their escape. They get out of the of their bind that they're in. Yep. Mm-hmm. There's a it's a battery operated telephone and the battery's dead. So they basically to raise the alarm they have to drive oh. 24 miles to Las Vegas Airport to report mm-hmm. the the crime. Battery operated telephone. Yeah. So like this mo- isn't the one of the sort of the most more modern type like we have now, where there is no power in a telephone. It's it's powered by the charge in the line. Yeah. Well, there was no line. I, don't, I guess. I presume. I there presume was no there line. Was. So this is a kind of point-to-point radio type yeah. telephone. I honestly, I don't know the detail on that, except that it was battery operated. But I mean, they're okay. out in the middle of the desert, right. in the early days of yeah. Las Vegas. So presumably, there weren't. There wasn't Those much readily right. available. Uh, yeah, electric either. Well, the the power to Nevada came in the thirties, I think, wasn't it? She should have used where it, before it was really kind of any she good. She should over have there. used methane power uh, <laughs> from all the oh, cattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From from cat to, cattle. to charge her phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quite right. Um, if you go back in time, you can invent that. Yeah, <laughs> methane oh, <well>. powered battery. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because it was the um, the Boulder Dam, now the Hoover Dam. Yes. Yes. And it provided electricity. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. So they drive to Las Vegas Airport, they report the crime. Immediately the FBI is called in. Okay. I was kind of mildly beginning to wonder, in a slightly uh, harsh way, hmm. um, why we're talking about this. <laughs> because it's the high society-ness and the amount of carrots in the diamond is the reason why it's in the news. The yeah. reason why it made the news. It was a yeah, it was a big deal. Yeah. She, I mean, she's a high hmm. profile figure, a very wealthy person, and it's a massive diamond, so it's obviously yeah. people are fascinated by that. Hmm. I'm not. Well, it wasn't <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to like not to be able to impress no, you. No, I mean <laughs> I don't mean this the subject. Bring me of a this. bigger diamond. <laughs> I don't mean the subject of this podcast. I just mean kind of jewels in general. I've just, to me, they'd like just shaved fruit pastels or, <laughs> you know, they're just like, I just don't what? care what? at all. What? Who's, Who's shaving a fruit, shaved pastel? fruit pastel? No, I'll tell you what's better. Uh, a wine, no, not a wine gum. A, uh, <laughs> Does it have heart... to be a sweet? <laughs> well, it's the size, isn't it? You know, like... Uh... Everlasting gobstoppers. Fisherman's friend. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, don't know. You madman, what are you thinking? Do you know like... Um, you can't shave a fisherman's oh, friend. Well, you can, you know a, but you he won't a, like it. He won't like you it. Know a, you know a tune. <laughs> I'm aware of it. And you bevel. <laughs> bevel a tune. <laughs> you bevel they can't the bevel edge. a tune. You bevel the edge. You can turn that into a... Ru- you a, you a, hum it, I'll smash your face hey. in. You, you can turn they... that into a ruby looking thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Just, I'm just not. It's virtually the same, isn't it? I know, that's what I'm saying. It's like, who cares? <laughs> you know but what I'll they say, you, you, can't, you can't bevel a tune. I know. I was going to say, I was going to say a locket, but that's, I can't think of the jewel that that would be. Is it an op- opal? Isn't opal, it? yeah. Oh, no, that's an I, opal fruit. Then, I'll it? give you one. Um, what's the one where the polar bear sits on a, oh, a fox's glacier <laughs> glacier mint? Fox's glacier mint. <laughs> yeah, you could turn that into a big diamond looking thing from afar until you lick it. <laughs> So, hang on, this is a fox's classic mint. <laughs> if someone's letting you lick their jewellery, I think things have got intimate very quickly. Um, I um, I did a quiz the other day, and one of the questions I asked was, what's the name of the bear oh, you... from the fox's classic mint? Oh, has it got a name? It's got a name, yeah. Which you, clearly you don't know the answer, because you didn't know it had a name. <laughs> Minty. No. I didn't know it had a name. It has a name. Um... Any more, any more pointless... Is it a single name? It is. Any more pointless guesses? Um, it's not Foxy. It's not no. Minty. It's not okay. Glastery. Okay. Uh, uh, it, it's... it's uh, well, we're not going to get it then, are we? No, of course you're not. No, we're not going to get it. Peppy. It? His name's Peppy. Really? Peppy. Why, has got a, why has it got a name? Very odd. Peppy the Bear. Yeah. There you go. You can have that. 
You so hang on, you that you Why didn't you... receive that question. You asked that. I asked the question. Yeah, yeah. Right. There you go. Right. What Take quiz was this? Just a Zoom quiz between. Was it also? Nerds? Was it about what sweets and their <laughs> What's similarity it? to? Yeah. Can you shave a, a ch- fruit, fruit pastel? <laughs> Can you shave a fruit pastel? Yeah. Is it, when is an opal fruit an opal? <laughs> that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, for people who don't know, opal fruits are also known as starbursts. Not in my house. Well, they did the same with uh, Constantinople, which it changed its yeah, name it's, to... Yeah, it's basically Constantin- it's exactly the same as that. <laughs> it changed its name to Constantin Starburst. Ceylon, uh, <laughs> Sri Lanka, Rhodesia, Rhodesia... <laughs> Zimbabwe, Opal Fruits, Starburst. Yeah, Marathon Snickers. So the FBI is on the case. Now, they immediately assume that they're going to transport this out of Nevada, obviously. Yeah, I, the F- I have to say, the FBI's account of this is wonderful to read. Oh, I yeah. recommend the listeners just go and look it up on, on FBI.gov. It's, just, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like it's written just casually by someone yeah. in plural sec first person so it's like oh we caught him yeah. and it wasn't too hard and yeah <laughs> we really knew what we were doing I mean we were so good yeah. you know if you ask for miracles dear, I give you the FBI so they have uh, the FBI have a, a suspect fairly quickly there's a man named John William Hugginson who committed a similar crime in California so he's on the radar so they're thinking oh same Don't MO. Know. What is a crime that is similar to stealing a quarter of a million pounds worth of diamond? <laughs> <laughs> yep. So they uh, they follow him around and they eventually arrest him when he's, he makes his way to Louisiana. Arrest him, no diamond. Ah. Ooh. So that's not right. But they're pretty sure they've got their guy. Obviously, he's not got it, but he's one of the gang. So they, they gang on to him and they're, um, they get a report from Newark in uh, New Jersey. Yep. That someone's trying to sell a diamond. There's this uh, local grocer who's put the word out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know the usual, the usual story. Seller. Mm. Yeah. All right. Most, you you know. don't want to buy a massive diamond. Ready, ready, ready. And yeah, some, I've, got sure 33, I've got 33 carrots to sell. Yeah. 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 Ready, ready, Jim. Get yeah. your apples. All get compressed into this. Potatoes. Get your carrots. <laughs> 33 carrots. I got massive diamond. Come on, ladies, come on, ladies, one pound fish. <laughs> very, very cheap, one pound fish, very, very good, one pound fish. Oh, my baby. <laughs> I think he's still, I know, he's probably not going now, but he was still going pre- That is brilliant. Uh, fish <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I'd forgotten about that. You know what I saw the other day that I'd forgotten even existed? Star Wars Kid. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, God, do you remember that? It's one of the original memes. He's probably 35. The earliest viral. Yeah, yeah. Mm. (laughs) That was brilliant, wasn't it? It's so so good, that Star Wars (laughs) Kid. (laughs) I'd say that was 15 15 plus years ago. Um, Star Wars Kid. (laughs) Can you imagine? Well, you don't have to imagine this on the internet. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, they they go to find this man, and they're led to a guy named James Reeves, who uh, has is trying to shift this diamond. James Reeves trying to sell mm-hmm. this diamond on the local agents from uh, New Jersey. They search his room, and what happened was that they they did a search. They ser- there's all the clothes hanging in the cupboard. They search all the pockets of the garments hanging up. And then one of the agents, when they're, they're leaving, they don't find anything. And one of the agents is leaving, he turns around and he goes, I say, oh, I thought, oh, I'll just search it again. Uh, but instead of searching the pockets, he pads down the whole coat. Mm. Yeah, because you wouldn't, you wouldn't bother doing that the first time around. No, they just literally say, oh, nothing in that pocket. I'll just, I'll ignore everything and go. Everything. <laughs> yeah, I'll ignore yeah. that. I'll ignore the Mona like Lisa under the bed. when you're looking for a body in a cellar, you don't yeah. lift up the floorboards till the last minute. Yeah, exactly. Or at least until the third search. No. Yeah. You, I, I often use the phrase... <laughs> Only ever look in one pocket <laughs> when I'm looking for my keys. Yeah. And if it's not in there, then it's definitely not on that coat. And you don't really look for anything until the third search. We've always no. said that, haven't we? No, We've always no, said that. That's a yeah. cl- classic yeah. method. So he pads down the coats and he finds uh, the diamond in the lining of one of, the, of his coat Ooh, in the cupboard. Very good. So they've got their man. They've got the diamond. 
and they later recover. This is like after six weeks. Well, I was just about to say, what's the time period? But that's pretty good, isn't it? Six weeks. It's not Could bad because they've gone. They've gone from Las Vegas to mm. Miami to Chicago to New Jersey. To New Jersey, yeah, yeah. So they've gone all over looking mm. for this diamond for these guys. And finally, they find him. And the uh, the baguettes, the two little baguette diamonds, they were oh, recovered yeah. from a jewelry store in St. Louis. St. Louis. Yep. Uh, shortly after, so which is even further north, all uh, you know, to complete yeah. the all over the place geography. It's gone mm. all, yeah, it's gone all round. So they've got their guys. So Hagenson, Reeves, and some more accomplices all went to trial in November '59. All found guilty. And when they put you in that cell, and those bars slam home, that's when you know it's for real. Although Hagenson was released on appeal, so. Uh, I don't actually know what they got in terms of sentencing. Yeah, I was surprised find that anything about the that. details quite scant. Yeah, I couldn't find anything and at the all. FBI they were guilty, that was it. And like I said, just a couple of hundred words and it's casual description. Yeah, I mean, every, everything I've looked into, all the research just follows the diamond. It does, Once they, it's out of their possession, yeah. it doesn't really care what they they did. So Right, they followed the diamond. And before um, Vera's ownership of it, I could find no history of that diamond at all. No. And no one seems to really know where it came from. No, absolutely. No no information yeah. about even the... And the, the characteristics much. of the diamond and its its clarity and style and structure yeah. point towards it possibly being from India, because it's typical of certain mines in India. Mm. But then there's been diamonds of that clarity and quality and style found in practically every mine on earth. So yeah. it you know it's it's almost impossible to locate it. So it wasn't yeah. um like you know Nazi gold kind of in that Who in knows? that gang. It, Who knows it could have been a larger diamond that got recut or it could have been I mean it could have been it could have been slave. Yeah, I was going to say it could have yeah. been mined by the yeah. Krupp you know family and go oh yeah, we'll have that. Yeah. So the perpetrators are all now put away and the diamonds are recovered. So Vera, Vera Krupp, yes. she took a few precautions to protect her diamond going forward. She had a secret bedroom and bathroom built in her house, hidden secret. behind wooden panelling. Yeah, yeah. Right. So if she was ever tied to a chair again, she could what? <laughs> well, it means that all her jewellery and etc. would be hidden from... Yeah. In a crying, secret bathroom. Crying eyes from a secret, yeah. in a secret bathroom, yeah. Who hasn't got a secret bathroom? Because that's what you do with your jewellery. Yeah. Well, it could have been in the bedroom. Maybe she had a, a secret shampoo and conditioner in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> um, she still wore the diamond, but when she went out in public, she uh, pinned it to her bra strap out of view. Oh, out of view. Right, right. okay. Out of Not view. on the outside. Not like, yeah. <laughs> she didn't wear a bra on the outside, like did Superman's she, underpants. Did she get her money back? Uh, cash or whatever the... Uh, uh, well, unknown. I mean, it's all focused on the diamond. I don't yeah, know. okay. Hmm. Which arguably is the cheap bit, isn't it? Because the diamond's yeah. only 250 at that point, but they stole 700,000 in cash. Yeah, well, oh. it's, a, yeah. it's a quarter of the overall tally of what was stolen, is that one oh, right. ring. Yeah. When Vera Krupp passed away, the ring went up for auction in 1968. And it was sold for what was a record price for a diamond ring at the time, $305,000. Okay. Uh, mm. And it was bought by actor Richard Burton. Ooh. Yeah. And he, um, he presented it to his wife at the time, Elizabeth Taylor. Yep. Uh, while they were on their yacht, the Kalisma, while it was moored on the Thames in London. Mm. So that was his gift. It was kind of quite, quite romantic up to that point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But it was moored in the Thames. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, it wasn't on the Nile, kind of, as would be befitting. Kind of grey and muddy. You know? Yeah. They were on a yacht. They weren't in the Thames. <laughs> they were on the Thames in a, in a fine boat. You've got this idea, like the moment you say, like, someone's giving someone a diamond ring of that kind of size yeah. on a yacht. In your mind, you're picturing blue oceans with sunlight and warmth. Yeah. <laughs> and it's probably a bit cloudy. It'd be this kind of greeny, grey, muddy water beneath yeah. their toes. You can you can imagine the conversation. I want to give you a ring, hey, uh, in London. Oh, but we'll be on a yacht, hey, on the Thames. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's there's still only a yacht. <laughs> I think they'll oh, a luxury live. yacht. I'm sorry, luxury yacht. Yeah, exactly. Mm. 
was this prior to marriage one between them two? Because there was uh, possibly three marriages between literally yeah, they broke Burton up and Taylor. Between 64 and 65 when he ran and off with um, three times. Uh, Princess of Yugoslavia and okay. then they married again for another year after that. <laughs> that would be in the middle of their first was marriage. It? Okay. Oh, so it wasn't a wedding thing. It was just a gift. It was just a gift, yeah. Right, yeah. okay. All right, fine. So they were married from March 64 to June 74 for the first time. So this was 68, so it was right in the middle. I think he was quite generous. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Old Richard Burton. I think that's proof of that. My, my understanding is, uh, I think that I'm sure I heard this from one or other or both of them at the time. They were both, uh, they said that they were addicted to romance, but that they didn't get along because it, they couldn't be romantic all the time or something like that. Yeah. So buying gifts and having lavish, being lavish and generous with one another oh, okay. was par for the course. But then when it was reality, they didn't get along. I'm now going to give you a Richard Burton uh, quote to do okay. with generosity. And I'm yeah. going to do it in the style of Richard Burton. Uh, um. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, a man. What is it? No, no. no. Um. <laughs> A man that hoards up riches and enjoys them not is like an ass that carries gold and eats thistles. Is that Richard that? Burton doing <laughs> Churchill? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was Richard Stilgo. That, that, that was uh, Richard Burton as done by Bill Murray in the film Scrooged. <laughs> I am all kind of nobody you know coming out before me. All those you get all the other the senior, you know, the really by four night fall of Gia. I swear, <laughs> by the I forswear. The, so anyway, but you know, he was loaded, wasn't he? So Yeah, he had a few bob. If I had loads of money, I'd buy stupid expensive things. <laughs> yeah. In nineteen sixty eight, that's all they had. I'd be straight down Carnaby Street. I'd be straight down the Thames pair of to shoes. get on a boat. Got a boat. I'd have been straight down the Labour Exchange <laughs> to, to buy it. <laughs> to buy it. <laughs> oh dear. So I got uh, one interesting tidbit about this. The, the, the last little nod is that uh, obviously Elizabeth Taylor was well known not only on stage and screen but in personal appearances and that for being adorned with jewellery, being very flamboyant. Yep. So much so that in 1993, in the season four finale of The Simpsons, uh, she her character appears. She's animated wearing the Krupp diamond. Oh, wow, wow. Um, she actually cleans it with a toothbrush and admires her own reflection. Oh, wow. in it. Miss Taylor, a couple of grade school kids wanted you to be on a crusty special. I told them to puzzle off. Good. So that was big. Well, obviously it was big news, wasn't it? Because it, yeah. it was a former... Nazi-owned diamond that now was owned by her. Yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously by this time it was called the Elizabeth Taylor diamond, not the Krupp diamond, but it's I, the you same can't, rock. You mm. can't help thinking nothing like rewriting well, history. Yeah, yeah, you can't help thinking in this day and age that that just would never have been allowed. He would, you'd never have been. It's oh, it's just old. I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, Brad Pitt's bought that uh, Nazi gold diamond. He's given it to his new girlfriend. The you know it just wouldn't be accepted would it it'd be like oh, i can't believe you um spent money on the whatever blood mm. dime you know that mm. kind of equivalent it would you'd be so attacked for it um yeah. i'm not i'm not yeah. saying you sh- shouldn't be attacked for it but i'm just saying <laughs> 50 years ago it was like oh uh, you never guess who's bought that massive diamond richard <laughs> taylor oh, yeah elizabeth taylor and now owns it richard burton sorry yeah. And she shows it off. Is that what she was known for doing? Showing it off? Yeah. yeah. Or... yeah. Wow. She had no I mean, qualms at all about going, yep, yeah, this is mine. Look at my rings, my rings, my rings. Look at my rings, my rings, my rings. Yeah, yeah. Where is it now? Well, after she died, it was sold to a South Korean conglomerate for $8.8 million. So it'll be more. Was it right after now? she died? She died in 2011. But it, that was when it was sold, was it? Yes, yeah. Okay. So $250,000 in 1959 equates to a current price of approximately $2.2 million. Oh. <laughs> right. So it's, it's gone, up in, gone up in price somewhat, though. Yeah. Well, it's because it's got fame. 
yes. added to it. It's got a yes. pedigree now. Yeah. It's got so yeah, it's got a story. Very much so. Yeah. So yeah, let's yeah. so three hundred and five thousand in nineteen sixty eight. So it went from two point two to two point three. So it hadn't gone up much, but since it's been in Elizabeth Taylor's hands. Yes. Mm. That's what you're paying for. That's who added the, five million. The diamond made yeah. a good career move. <laughs> uh, yeah. Rebranded career move. And then hence why the South Korean businessman paid obscene amounts. And it'll be obviously worth more again, won't it now? It'll be a good investment for him. Yeah, since he's had it, it's no yeah. doubt gone up even yeah. more. Exactly. <laughs> he's added his South Korean pedigree to it. <laughs> I mean, the Elizabeth Taylor diamond is not to be confused with the Taylor Burton diamond, which was purchased in 1969, a year later, by mm. the two of them, and that weighed 68 carats. It was more than double wow. a year later. It was eclipsed wow. by that one. So it was... Wow. Does that mean it was... So 33 versus 68, does that mean it was one and a half times the size of it, or are we talking... Yeah, car- carats is a measure of weight. So it was yeah a big marble... A big, a big old marble. Yeah. It's the shape of a pear, I believe. Wow. Uh, which also then set a record price, uh, over a million dollars. And it was worn at the 40th birthday party of Princess Grace of Monaco by Elizabeth Taylor and at the 42nd Academy Awards. Wow, wow. But the favoured one appears to be the formerly Krupp diamond. Oh, okay. Elizabeth Taylor diamond. Wow. Hmm. It's not a very attractive gem. Well, I don't wear any jewellery of any kind, so no, I'm not attracted me, to gems. But, it, but when you when you sort of hear about a sort of this huge diamond, you expect to see something that's really kind of quite special, mm. and it it kind of looks like a piece of glass. Right, I'm going to I'm on what? Google now. Yeah, you could I've, say that about all diamonds, though, can you? They look like yeah, glass. Yeah, well, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would say that, but anyway, I'm on Google yeah. now. I've typed in K. I've typed in R. I've typed in U. And it's come up as the top thing. What's the, what possibly is the second thing after K R U? Krusty the clown. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It goes cru- and that's it goes, and that's your Google search history. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the top thing on there, and I've never searched for it ever. And the, that Krupp diamond is top, and Krusty the clown, <laughs> Krusty the clown is second. That's serendipity. That is. Yeah. Oh bloody hell! It's massive. That's all for this time. If you want to know more about what we've discussed over the course of this episode, just Google it or something. You can see daily true crime updates on our Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. You can email us or you can support the show with a PayPal donation. And links to all of those are on our website at truecrimediary.co.uk. Don't forget to send us a review or post one in your podcast service if you can. And all five star reviews will get a shout out on a future episode. Join us next time when we'll be similarly discussing and digressing on another event in true crime history. Until then, my thanks to Jared and Rue. My name's Mark and we'll see you on the next date in our true crime diary.